Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. What a time and season we are in. Awesome. You know, it's an awesome thing to be alive right now, to watch everything that's going on in the world. Again, I want to reiterate the area that God is changing the atmosphere of the world. He's going to expose the wickedness. Many of them are going to jail. And we pray their redemption while they're in jail. The kingdom of darkness is getting placed on hold. That's why God is exposing and removing. He's bringing his atmosphere so the body of Christ can flourish. So we are in the time of plenty before the time of famine. We are the generation of the Lord's return. I want to say, I'm the generation of the Lord's return. It may be hard to comprehend. But if we're still alive, we're going to see his return. Remember, there's three whirlwinds, and I want to refresh us on that. The first whirlwind that started, actually it started in 2012. That's when Obama got reelected. And many people became Obamanites. And fell under darkness because it was the, the quickest change and move of darkness on this earth that has ever happened in centuries when he was put in office. And I got to tell you, that was the body of Christ's fault. Because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They were too busy chasing prosperity and everything else instead of chasing the enemy. So God had to raise up a man that used to be a part of them, pulled him out, placed his hand on him, anointed him, and put him in office, who was a businessman. Because God can use a donkey. Amen? But see, the natural eye of mankind can't see this. They can't comprehend it because darkness can't comprehend light. Whether you say you're a Christian or not, the Word warns us about having darkness in us. Because there are many who have fallen back into blindness and the veils are bad on them because of what they're approving and what they're promoting, even what they're voting. Amen? Remember, God doesn't approve of what? Abortion. And he does not approve of sexual perversion. Anybody approves, promotes, or votes that is under the veil. And they have fallen into delusion. And they need to come out quickly because they will wake up in hell. Whether they claim to be a Christian or not. Why? Because the word Christian means Christ-like. That means you're a follower of what he approves of. And you reject what he disapproves of. Amen? So we are in such a time and season right now. It's awesome. And there's something that the Spirit brought to me this morning. He said, you know what? What's happening right now is the spirit of compromise is really hindering my people. These demonic forces, Jezebel and Ahab, you know, we see that in these parties. We see a lot of demonic battles in the areas of witchcraft and sorcery, which are allowed in schools these days. They threw, they threw Christ out and put everything else in. Now they give you a choice at a certain age what your gender wants to be. So I guess you flip a coin. Heads, you're a girl. Tails, you're a dude, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty sick of what's going on. In other words, the world has been dumbed down through education, through the colleges. Professors that are anti-Christ have gotten in. Judges that are anti-Christ have gotten in. Attorneys, law firms, and, and wealthy individuals that have gotten in and taken positions have dumbed down America. Our children are being dumbed down. They need to have the examples at home like they've never had before. They need to see mom and dad, or at least mom or dad. Amen? It's a shame to hear about Christians shacking up with the opposite sex or even the same sex and trying to raise children without being united in marriage under the hand of God. 
That is a poor example. Poor. And that's why it's going down. So if, if the enemy can influence the household, it's going to affect many, many people. Because he's influencing right now the media. The media is controlling everything. People have no idea. They're, those are called false prophets. Those are the prophets of Baal. And they're promoting perversion. They're promoting wickedness. They're promoting bloodshed. They're promoting it. And they're coming against what God is trying to do right now. People don't even realize that. These are antichrist organizations that are under the rule of Satan. And you got to remember something that Satan's been ruling this country, uh, the world for centuries since the fall of Adam. He is the ruler of this earth. That's why we must come out from under his rule, under the authority of Christ. And as we maintain that, so there's something we got to do. We've got to maintain on a, a, a reality all the time of who we are. See, the first thing the enemy wants to do is compromise your identity. If he can compromise your identity at all, you'll sway, you'll drift, and you'll compromise. Identity. Everyone say identity. The areas of maintaining an identity in Christ is first pursue them. We must pursue truth. Everyone say pursue truth. People are so busy pursuing everything else. They're chasing perversion, sexual. They're chasing opposite sex. They're chasing money. They're chasing businesses. They're chasing talent. They're chasing education. They're chasing everything but the truth. Who is a person? In Deuteronomy chapter 4. Pursuit of truth is today's title. Deuteronomy chapter 4. In verse 15, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. So think about this. When you begin to compromise pursuing the truth, you're surrendering your identity. Isn't that what happened to Esau? He pursued beef stew. Exchange his birthright. People are exchanging their birthright. Some of them don't even know they have one. In verse 14, or 15, sorry. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved image in a form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. How many of y'all know a figure can be in a mirror? You. You could be the idol. Me, myself, and I is the trinity of Satan. <laughs> Amen? So it's not just about forming them an idol. You can become that idol. Because you're always number one. 17. The likeness of any animal that is on the earth or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air. The likeness of anything that creeps on the ground or the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. And take heed lest you lift up your eyes to heaven and when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars and all the hosts of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God has given to all the peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage. You feel. Remember, the enemy loves to mess with your emotions. That's how demons get fed by emotion. 
I can't tell you how many times people are interrupted in a worship service because of how they feel. They accept it. They fall into a religious state. Instead of sowing, oh, they shut their eyes and just lift their hands, whatever. And sowing, see, let me tell you something. Your only way out is to sow your way out. And until that comes a reality to you, there's a time of getting on your face, and there's a time of worship, and there's a time of praise. If you don't know that, then you're out of order. There's a disconnect. Does everybody understand? Verse 20. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace out of Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage. To be his people and inheritance as you are this day. Furthermore, everyone say, I am the inheritance of the Lord. Now, you got to remember something. Remember we talked about this, well, I think it was last week or whatever, that you and I, we were chosen, we were called, and we're blessed. Why? Because bless is associated with favored. But we're the blessing to the Father from Jesus. Does everybody get it? Jesus paid the price for me and you. That he could take us from darkness, melt us, and mold us, and become trophies for his glory. That's what this is about. Verse 21. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes and swore that I would not cross over the Jordan. Now this is Moses speaking. And that I would not enter the good land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not cross over the Jordan. But you shall cross over and possess that good land. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God which he made with you, and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire and a what? Jealous God. When you begot children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make a carved image in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left, left few in the number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods and work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from this, you will seek the Lord God. They will do what? Seek. And you will find him if you do what? If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. So he's sharing with us, you will be hard-pressed. You'll be hard-pressed all around to serve other gods. You'll be hard-pressed that yourself will become a god to you. You'll be hard-pressed. But he says, look, you got to do something. You must seek. Seek is pursue. Pursue. To seek is to what? Pursue. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him. If you do what? Seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, which means now. When you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will not forsake you nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to you. So what is he saying? Seek me with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all your will. For ask now concerning the days that are past, which were before you since that day that God created man on the earth, and ask from one end of heaven to the other, whether any great thing like this has happened or anything like it has been heard. Did any people ever hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of a fire as you have heard and live? See, he's sharing with them. This is, in other words, when you are filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's the voice of God. You now have the fire of God. You now have the presence of God. You get a language of God. 
where you can speak directly to him, where the devil doesn't know what you're saying. It's called tongues. Because he can interrupt and interpret, uh, uh, interfere with any other language. So when you're praying in the spirit, you're actually praying the perfect will of God. But see, and it's a gift for everyone. It stirs you up and increases your faith praying in the tongues. It helps you to pursue truth. To go after. Anything that is in a way of pursuit is an idol. Is everybody okay? So we're to seek, we're to pursue, we're to grope, we're to follow, we're to indulge, we're to fight to enter into his presence. Because in his presence is truth, his character, his divine nature, and divine power called the anointing, which is the eternal power, truth, and presence of God Almighty. And Luke 9. Many will fall from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Taking heed means being influenced, being spoken to by the presence of evil. I'm telling you, it's being promoted right now on all of much of the media, especially the news and radios and talk shows and so forth. You must be careful what you hear, because what you hear and agree with, you become. And there's a lot of cursed things being promoted. And many believers are becoming cursed because they're agreeing with it. One of the things about a curse, it brings blindness. Everyone say a curse brings blindness. Luke 9, verse 23. So we must maintain our identity because, again, that's one of the things that the demonic forces want to compromise and want to steal. Think about when Jesus was tempted. What was the first thing? If you are the Son of God. Trying to compromise his identity, right? If you are the son of God. If. That's the enemy tries to bring to you all the time. Are you really an offspring? Are you really a child of God? Look at what you're doing. Look at what you've done. He's always trying to bring you to your past because he can't convict you of your future. That's why we must always sever ourselves from our past and walk away from it. Anything that you're still bringing from your past into the present is an open door to the enemy to you. Verse 23, is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Then Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to what? Come after me or pursue me, right? Let him what? Deny. Deny himself and take up his cross when? Daily, not when he feels like it. And then what? Follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and all the goods and treasures, and he himself is destroyed? Again, we see here, deny ourselves from attachments to soulish, deceptive, materialistic, traditional, ways of this world. How many of you know not all of our traditions are good? Amen? Man, you eat enough pasta for the rest of your life, you're going to get diabetes. <laughs> eat enough whatever, you're going to turn into it, right? Because what you speak is what you eat, what you eat is what? What you become. Eat tur you eat enough Twinkies, you become a Twinkie. So when we speak light, we become light. Amen? And the more light that we speak, the more light we eat, the more spirits loose us. So we're to deny ourselves from attachments to the soulish, deceptive, materialistic, and traditional things of this world. We're to pursue, seek, and fight for the truth in His presence in God's presence and in his word. We must fight there. See, the enemy will do everything. Did you ever notice when you pick up your Bible, you could go to sleep? It's almost like a bedtime story. 
But you got to fight that. Because the enemy doesn't want you to know the truth because he knows truth will set you free if you practice it. So you can know it but not practice it. There's a lot of people, everybody in hell knows the truth now. The problem is they can't get out. Because they didn't practice it before they went there. Galatians, uh, Colossians 3. Pursuit of truth. Oh, hallelujah. Colossians 3 and verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek. Everyone say seek. Those things which are what? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Say that again. You died, and your life is hidden with Christ. Where? In God. That means your identity is in Him. Your life is your identity. Your, uh, your identity will dictate your life. So if the enemy can compromise your identity, your life is going to change. Does everybody get this? I want you to know he's on pursuit of altering your identity all the time. But if you are in pursuit of the truth, you will maintain your identity. Is everybody okay? He said, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So your identity is in God because that is your life. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him where? In glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is what? Idolatry. And it says, because of these things, the what? The wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are the what? Put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And don't lie to one another since you've put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all and what? In all. So we are to seek, pursue the truth. And in this, that's why it's vitally important because everything, everything is released from his presence. Everything. Without his presence, you and I are nothing. I don't care if you can memorize every page number. You'll have no power without backed up by the presence of God. See, this is where people, that's where the word says the letter kills and the spirit brings what? Life. Because without the anointing, you and I are nothing. I get a lot of people that come up to my path who have come out of cemetery school or seminary school. And, uh, oh, they know the Bible, but they don't know him. They've taken courses to get educated. They need to just fast and pray. They'll get educated. And be led by the Spirit. See, the Word says that you don't need a man to teach you. The anointing will. Amen? The anointing teaches you. Listen, after my visitation from the Lord, the Lord introduced me to the anointing Holy Spirit, who's the carrier of it. He taught me. He taught me how to read. He taught me how to interpret the Word of God. He taught me about times and seasons. He taught me about the strategies. He taught me about the powers of darkness and what they do. He taught me what is clean and unclean. He taught me what pleases God and displeases God. And he's still teaching us because he's called the spirit of truth and he doesn't quit. He doesn't stop. What we try to do is shut him off. And he comes with a conviction. It's simple. Touch. Hey, 
You know better than that. You know that's not true. Why don't you come and talk to me? Hello? See, he's always trying to get you to, he wants to be your best friend. Amen. Let's high five each other. We high five each other. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Yes. We're to seek, pursue the truth. Everything, again, comes from his presence. That's why you got to be worshipers. The word says the Father seeks those who will worship him. How many of you ought to be sought by the Father? Heck, you're pursuing truth. Dad's seeking you. The Father seeks out those who will worship him in truth and in spirit. So the more you worship him, the more you get in God's presence, the more you become. There's an exchange of your old stuff for his new stuff. Character for character. We got to seek, pursue the truth. It's in his presence, his character. Your life, your identity is in Christ. And it says when he appears, you will also appear with him, right? Does everybody get it? That's that oneness. So when he appears, you're right there. Because we live and breathe and have our being in him. So it's not about going to a Bible study. It's about getting in God's presence. Then the word is released after his presence comes. So people can absorb. When I'll pursue of him and in his presence, many will fall. They fall into a mis mistaken or false identity. Their identity has become compromised. Now they're a, an employee. Yes, I'm a football player. I'm a baseball player. I'm a tennis player. I'm a, an attorney. I'm a judge. See, there's their identity. Many people are really foolish and call, consider the identity of an organization. Yes, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. That's poor identities. Or to be Christ. Christ-like. My identity is not with an organization. It's with a living organism. It's with life and life himself. This is where we have relationship. This is where exchanges are made. Amen? We got to cut loose from identities of the world. I may be called a pastor or a preacher and many other things I won't mention. But those are not my identities. My identity is him. I'm his son. He's my dad. My life is in him, and you know what? His life is in me. And what he wants to do is express his life through us. Where there's fruits of righteousness. Where there's love, compassion. Without the pursuit, many will fall in mistaken identity and false identity. They'll give up their portion and authority, or their position and authority. And they'll give up their birthright. In Matthew 6. Pursuit of truth. It's how you keep it. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 31. Is everybody there? What's it say? Therefore what? Don't what? Don't worry, be happy. Therefore don't worry, says, saying, what shall we eat? <laughs> or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after these things the Father, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you are needed of these things. Hello, those are simple. Those are common sense things. God's going to provide no matter what. So don't worry. Don't fear. Don't fret. Don't freak out. But seek what? 
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. In other words, pursue truth. Pursue his presence. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. Many people are still freaking out tomorrow, and they haven't even gone through today yet. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day <laughs> is its own trouble. And you know, the enemy always tries to bring you into tomorrow. What about tomorrow? Well, who cares? You ain't there yet. If God be for you, who can be against you? If you're in divine position and you're right with God, you ain't got nothing to worry about. It's when you are not in divine position and you're not right with God, you got a lot to worry about. Amen? Seek, pursue, go after, grow, dig <laughs> for the truth. And everything will come into the place and in due time because you are fast after the pursuit of the truth, whom is Christ Jesus. You are Christ's identity. Do you, everybody understand that? Many will lose the identity of Christ because of fear, anxiety, and worry. They'll be compromised. Look, at when that happens, it's because their, their, their identity has been compromised. It's fear. And 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. Hallelujah. In verse 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. You know, many people sell their identities for a feeling. For one moment feeling. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. So if you are in him, are you promoting sin? No. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you're going to repent so it doesn't dwell there. Amen? Whoever abides, uh-oh, here we go. Whoever abides, that means pursue, lives in, seeks after, abide. You can't abide with something unless you what? Pursue it or seek it. Does everybody see that? Whoever does what? Abides in him does not sin, does not agree with darkness. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Why? Because that person does not have the identity of Christ. So he's warning us. Without your pursuit and abiding in him, you will compromise your identity and you'll begin to promote and agree with evil. Verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins of, is of the what? Devil. In other words, they're being influenced by darkness. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might. That word might means you must cooperate with him. He might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. In other words, it's a place, a position. It's called a born-again state of being. Why? Because you're abiding in him. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his, sin re his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice what? Righteousness is not of God. How about if you don't approve of righteousness? Amen? Nor is he who does not love his brother. 
Again, we are back to the arena. Abide, pursue, seek. Abides in his presence. Abides in him, must pursue before abide. And the fruits will be righteousness. And because you are in him, he is in you. And your identity maintains. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. In John chapter 8. One of the things, that, and I've shared before, is I really believe that the Holy Spirit is trying to bring the area of getting people out of the soulish arena and out of the flesh to maintain in the spirit. Because they're so moved by the flesh and the soul. They're still making decisions in how they feel instead of what truth is or what righteousness is. You know, you can be zealous. Even the Lord was zealous for the, his house. Amen? But his zealousness was backed by the anointing. But you can be zealous in the flesh. Does everybody get it? John 8, 31. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the what? Truth and the truth shall do what? Make you free. Then he answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will, make, you will be made free? And Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I see from my father with my father, and you do, do what you see from your father. And they answered him and said to him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did, did not do this. You do the th deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. Snap. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's word. Therefore, you, are, you do not hear because you're not of God. Now, some of them may have been of God, but not anymore. Amen? The pursuit of truth is constant. It's not a one-time moment. It's always. We are always pursuing truth. Truth is in his word and in his presence. Again, the Holy Spirit always is leading us and bringing us to the truth because he's the spirit of truth. Truth is in the anointing, the divine nature, divine power to overcome all lies of deception that will compromise or steal the reality of your identity. We are fighting to maintain identity, but that means you're fighting to maintain the presence of God. And Psalm 16. Psalm 16. In verse 7, it says, I will bless the Lord who has given me what? Counsel, co correction, direction. My heart also instructs me in the night season. I have set what? The Lord always where? Before me. Before me. Before me. Because he's at my right hand, I will not be moved. 
until you begin to start setting the Lord before you, you will easily be swayed, moved, and drifted, and your identity will be easily compromised and eventually stolen. Again, there's an, a reality where you and I must maintain who we are. You don't have to maintain where you came from. It's where you are now. Who you are in him. Am I living from the future or from the past? Am I still associated with things that try to steal my identity? Am I listening to music that's trying to steal my identity? Am I watching movies that are trying to steal my identity? Am I associated with people that are trying to steal my identity? If they're not unplugged from the world, they will do everything they can. They may be your best friend, but that won't last forever. They will always turn on you. So we're to set the Lord before us in pursuit of truth to maintain identity. In Psalm 15, let's start at verse 1. You didn't have to go far. What does it say? Abide in your tabernacle, which means in your presence. And who may dwell in your holy hill, meaning in his presence. If you're dwelling in his presence, are you maintaining identity? Yes. And it says here, he's, he warns us. He says, look it. You want to maintain my presence and hold on to your identity? Okay, you got to pursue me. It says, he who walks uprightly. He who works righteousness. He who speaks the truth in his heart. There's a lot of people who speak truth, but their heart ain't right. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised. You know, you're supposed to despise the works of evil, not pet it, not compromise it, not hope it goes away. Hello? You're to depart from evil. But he who honors those, he honors those who what? Fear the Lord. They reverence, honor, and respect. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be what? Moved. Moved from what? Your identity. Oh, praise God. All is in his presence. Everything's in his presence. Attaching, connecting, and living in his presence is vital for me and you. Amen? 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. See, the enemy likes to put signs out there and try and get people into his, his presence. Did you ever go by a bar and says, food and spirits? Amen? They really ought to tell you the truth. It should be food and demons. Amen? People go, it's amazing how many Christians still drink and think it's okay. Not realizing it's a false identity. You can't maintain an identity touching unclean things. You will compromise it. You know what I hear a lot about? Well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. The problem is you don't. See, they, they still don't believe that there's a sign in front, at the throne room of God that's an entrance sign. <laughs> it says, must produce righteousness and justice. Must love truth. No one gets in without it. But I'm a Christian. Well, if you're a Christian and you're following Christ, then you'll maintain the fruits of Christ. Because it means Christ-like. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace which is God's plan. Amen? Let's clear that up again. Grace is not favor. Never has been, never will be. Grace is not God's favor. Grace is the plan of God to escape. Amen? Your obedience brings you favor. Amen? Because if you can't, God can't trust you, is he going to give you everything? No. 
So grace is God's plan of escaping the deception of evil and his God's wrath. It's a way of escape from hell. Verse 2. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men who will be able to what? Teach others. Verse 3, 2 Timothy 2. You therefore must what? Endure. Endure. How I many you know patience is endurance? You must endure hardship as a what? A good soldier of Jesus Christ. Everyone say, I'm a soldier. I'm a warrior. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? Because your life is in Christ. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes he, in athletics, he is not crowned unless he what? Competes according to the rules. Those are guidelines by the Holy Spirit. A hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So we are called to be soldiers of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I think many people lose their identity as a soldier. They get caught up in religion. Remember that <laughs> this was a military operation from God Almighty. That's why Jesus came. He is called the Lord of hosts, meaning he is the commander-in-chief of the army. This is not a religious act by God Almighty. This was a military operation. Amen. We are in a military war. Remember, war broke out in heaven in Revelation 12. You have been called into the military of God. If you're a citizen, you're a soldier. But too many people don't want to be a soldier. They just want to be a citizen. So they want everyone else to do your fighting for them. It doesn't work that way. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. That's why God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of fight. Because they don't fight. They don't know how. They don't know about the spiritual warfare. They don't know about the evilness and wickedness. They're involved in organizations and businesses and false religions that promote nothing but love of God. Oh, God loves you. Yes, he does. But God's love won't rescue you from hell. Your obedience does. Does everybody understand that? Your obedience to cooperate with him. He's given me and you everything. That's how much he loves us. He died on the cross and made the price and made the exchange so you and I could have everything. We wouldn't lack anything. We have the weapons. We have everything. We know how to fight. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The gates of hell can't prevail. He who's in you is greater than he who's in the world. People don't know this stuff. They go around proclaiming Christian and act like wimps. They don't know how to fight. Their kids freak out. They don't know how to cast the demon out of them. They call 911 instead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Praise God. <laughs> oh, glory. Where are we at now? Oh, 16. Let's start there. Therefore, from now on, we... Regard no one according to the what? Flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in where? In Christ. He's a what? New creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, what is Christ? Christ is the anointing. 
It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. If you're not in the presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, you're not in him. Does everybody get that? Then you've lost your or compromised your identity. Now all things are of God who has re reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are what? We are what? Amb so not only are we soldiers, but we are ambassadors. See, people don't even know that because their identity has been compromised. So they go around, I'm just a wimpy Christian. You can drive over me. You can do whatever you want. I ain't fighting. No. Jesus was not a wimp. He was a fighter. He was a mover and a shaker. And wherever he went, he caused problems. Why? Because he wasn't religious. He was exposing it all. Come on, all these religious dudes that had all these beautiful robes on and all the kind. He called them... You're the father of the devil. Right? He called them devils, demons. Person dying to move over, man. They're not dead. They're just asleep. Called them hypocrites. He said, woe to you means without eternity. Woe. Again, he wasn't a wimp. He was a warrior. He's a commander and a chief. And he's coming back as one. And we're following him. Praise God. On white Harleys. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some kind of horses, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> In a whirlwind, who knows? We'll probably just appear. You know. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be what? Reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What's more, might mean? Cooperate. First Peter chapter 5. And then two more scriptures. Or is that 20? Oh, it's 20. 1 Peter 5. Is everybody all right? You cool? Are you learning something? Actually, you know what? I need to go somewhere else. I need to go to Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Then we'll go to 1 Peter 5, okay? Psalm 18. In verse 37, whoa, yeah. So we not only must pursue truth, amen? In pursuing truth, there's something that's going to always come up. Your enemy. That means not only do you pursue the truth, but you pursue your enemy. Now, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about spirits. Amen? So you're not going to go start people's cars on fire and stuff like that, you know? Although you'd like to. <laughs> but you pursue the spirits that are influencing them. Amen? You pursue. Listen, how do you know who your enemy is? What are you struggling with? As you go through your trials and tribulations, remember two things that occur. Your impurities and your enemies. They will be exposed. So you attack them. You cut them off with the sword of the Spirit. You drive them out. You pursue them until it's gone. You have a sickness, you pursue it until it's gone. You have a fear, you pursue it until it's gone. You don't let up on it. In fact, when it first starts, just... Oh. Don't take it. Come off of it right now. No, I will not accept this pain. Does everybody get it? You must pursue it and remove it. Why? Because 
He who is in you is greater than that pain. He is in you is greater than everything else. If you are abiding in him, he's abiding in you. What the snap? You got it all. All right. Verse 37. What does it say? Let's speak it. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed, removed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. You have armed me with the strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. Listen, when you get tempted, don't ignore it. Destroy it. Pursue it. You know, many people go back to drugs, alcohol, fornic fornication, pornography, whatever, uh, the same bad attitude. Look, at when that starts coming, pursue it and get rid of it. Don't wait for it to take a hold of you and get placed in it and raise a family in you. Get rid of it. Hallelujah. Verse 40. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save. Even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind, and I cast them out like dirt into the what? Streets. you got to do the same thing. You must not only pursue truth, but you must pursue your enemy. Amen? How many of you all know a lie is an enemy? Hallelujah. First Peter 5, let's go there. How many know an idol is an enemy? First Peter chapter 5. How many know pride is an enemy? How many know rebellion is an enemy? How about lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life? Yep. In verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes. All of you be submissive to one another. Be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the, God resists the, God resists the proud. In fact, he said the, the, there's a distance of, of, from God with the proud. But God gives grace to the what? Humble. What is grace? God's plan of escape. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in what? Due time or due what? Season. I'm telling you, everything's going to work to the good. If you just fight and stay strong, stay in position, pursue the truth and pursue your enemy and get rid of it. You'll have peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It says here, uh, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Quit trying to fix your problem immediately. Get rid of it. Hello? You must spiritually attack, not physically. People are still attacking first physically. You go spiritually. It says, verse 8, be sober. That means alert. Be vigilant. means consistent. That means you must have your Sonar and radar up to date. You got to be alert, sensitive. That only happens from living in his presence, being led by the Spirit. He's going to tell you things to come. One of the prayers I asked the Lord today, Lord, take me off the enemy's radar. Hide me in a secret place with you. Because, you know, as soon as you react, you beep on his radar. Beep that. Food. You get an argument, beep, beep, beep. You got 60 demons that just showed up. They're all getting fed. Do you ever notice that an argument doesn't get better? It gets worse. Why? Do you think they're being provoked? They're, what they're actually saying is, my flesh is bigger than yours. Oh, Hallelujah. So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion doing what? Seeking whom he may devour. So you better seek him. 
Amen? Seek him out. Seek your enemy. Get rid of him. It says, resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you are not the only one going through it. And when the enemy tells me, you're the only one. Oh, woe is me. What's he trying to do? Get you in the soul. See, he wants to get you out of the spirit. If he can get you out of the spirit, into the soulish, and into the flesh, compromise identity. Your identity is not in the soulish. Your identity is not in the flesh. Your identity is in the spirit. Galatians 6. I think we'll close here. Galatians 6. I think you got it. Did you get it? If you didn't, you're going to get it. Galatians chapter 6. In verse 7. Do not be what? Do not be what? Don't be what? Don't be deceived in simple words. Don't be stupid. Amen? God is not mocked. And whatever man sows, he's going to also what? Reap. He who sows to his flesh will reap corruption. Hello. So God, the, the enemy is always trying to get you to react. That's sowing in the flesh. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. So nobody gets away with it. Amen. Nobody gets away with it. It may, it may look like they're getting away with it, but they're not going to. And let us not grow what? Weary while doing good, while fighting, while pursuing, pursuing your enemies, pursuing the truth, staying in God's presence, departing from evil, exposing the wickedness. Don't grow weary while doing the right thing before God. For in due season, you're going to reap. You're going to be blessed. You're going to prosper as long as you don't lose heart. So don't give up when you feel like it. Amen? Don't let that feeling dictate. Pursue. Everyone say pursue. Because I'm a soldier. I'm an ambassador. I'm an offspring of the anointed one. And it's anointing. And he who's in me is greater than he who's in the world. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You can bring up any cash you